today because a certain kitty cat has pinched my seat and if you tried budging the kitty cat he won't move so I'm on the floor. So today's video is a little bit of a tutorial and using a few scraps and yet again I love to use my scraps up and this time we're going to make a really rustic heart swag. So if you fancy making one with me stay tuned and I shall show you exactly how easy it is to do in a forward step by step. So to make the primitive rustic heart swag, all you're going to need is a craft knife, that's to make the little holes to thread the hearts with, and some jute string to tie them all together, and some wadding which is going to be used to quilt between the layers. Now I would recommend nothing too uh, heavy weight in the wadding because you are going to be quilting through like four layers in total so nothing too thick and it's much more manageable or which I prefer to use is the cotton batten which is a lovely weight and both are perfectly fine and then obviously you need to rummage through your scraps I've got some nice rustic fabrics there and you can use different fabrics if you want or you can just use your swag with all the same fabrics it's entirely up to you depending on what look you're going for and just literally you can go through your scrap box and you're only using the tiniest bits so it's ideal for all your scraps and then we've got the two heart templates so we've got the small heart which creates that one there and then we've also got the large heart template which creates the bigger heart so you've got the bottom template which is the cream calico background and then the small template which is your heart and for the calico background I've just got some scrap medium weight calico for the back and the front layers and we're going to sandwich them all together so you just literally pin your largest template out for both size hearts if you're going to use both size hearts and obviously cut around and cut as many as you want for your swag and obviously you're going to be cutting through two layers because you're going to need two layers per heart and for speed you can pin through a few layers if you want to cut them out. I like to batch cut, I like to cut quite a few out and I keep them cut out ready for next time I need to give a gift and they're all ready cut out ready to make into the hearts. So then for the next size you do exactly the same on the calico, use the small heart template, the largest of the two templates there and again pin to your calico and cut out whatever number you want. Don't forget to cut out on double layer. So for the swag I'm going to be making today, I'm going to go for the three larger hearts with the four smaller hearts either side and um, as I say you can just go for as many as you want but that's what I'm going for today and as usual my foreman is watching to make sure I do everything right so like I say you can play with your hearts you can do a string of small ones a string with just three on there or you can maybe do a string with different ones it's entirely up to you so there's my calico 
hearts ready and I just need now to pick the smaller template for each heart for my fabric topping. So you use a smaller template which is absolutely ideal for all your scraps. Now if you're going to be using something with a directional, say like my little gingham there, obviously make sure you place your heart so your fabric direction is running down the heart. Uh, unless you're not bothered and then you can just literally cut out whichever direction you want but if you're a little bit of a, a neat freak like me I like to have everything just so but obviously that's not the case if you're going to be using floral or something like that or a non-directional fabric so yeah just cut them out and obviously you only need one for each heart and like I said before I like to cut out a batch if I'm going to be cutting some out I'll cut a batch out so I've got plenty in stock for that last minute gift if I need one and you do the same for the larger heart, get the smaller template for the larger heart and pick your fabric that you're going to use. I'm just going to use the two, the two fabrics today but you could use as many or you can just go for the one if you want. All we need to do now is cut out the wadding so again you need your larger templates for both size hearts and cut out either your wadding or your batting whichever you're going to use and just cut them out you don't have to be precise here because your hearts are going to get trimmed down slightly at the end and I'll show you how to do that so just cut out whatever you need for all your hearts that you're going to be sewing got all our wadding cut out and we've got our calico and our fabric chores cut out we need to sandwich the layers together so you put your calico down then you put your wadding then your layer of calico followed by your choice final layer and then you're going to pin through all four layers So you're going to do that for all the hearts so just literally sandwich them all together and pin them in place and again because it's a rustic swag it doesn't have to be spot on center or anything like that just as long as it sits evenly on top of your little sandwich there to go to the machine and what we're going to do is we're going to be stitching through all the layers we're going to do two rows of stitching to get that lovely effect and I'm just going to put my machine on to the largest the longest stitch length which is five millimeter on mine and it's as simple as literally stitching through all the layers so we're going to sew through all four layers and you just literally pop your heart under the foot stitching the top fabric first I find it's easier that way and just back stitch a little bit and just literally stitch your top fabric through all four layers all the way around and again it doesn't have to be super super neat because it is a rustic a rustic look is what we're going for as well and don't worry if you find that your heart fabric moves a little bit like mine has here because it does get trimmed off at the end so don't worry too much there and then again sew through the calico layer as well sandwiching through the layers and back tack and finish and just repeat that for all your hearts all size hearts all the way around using the longer stitch and then again through the calico layer so you're doing two rows of stitching I 
and you should have some hearts that look something like that. And again, for the little ones, do exactly the same all the way around. All the time being monitored by my cat supervisor. And you should have a lovely little bunch of hearts there, so I just need to snip any loose threads and we're now going to go around and neaten up those hearts so that's why I said don't worry if there are a little bit movement on there and they didn't don't look quite even enough just take your scissors and you just literally trim those hearts down take off those bits that have moved underneath the, through the layers or if it just doesn't look quite even just literally trim them down like I'm doing here and you do that for all of the hearts just trim them down ready for dipping them into our coffee mixture to make them lovely and rustic and primitive. So once you've trimmed them down and you're happy with them you can either leave the calico plain and add a pretty fabric to the top if you wanted a pretty effect like I've got there or we can go for the darker grungy look which is what we're going to do for this tutorial. So we need to pop the kettle on, get an old dish and form our nice mixture that's going to stain those hearts down. Now obviously I'm using my best coffee here because I didn't have any of the cheap stuff to hand, preferably use or some cheap coffee mixture, don't use your best coffee but for this example I'm using my best and you just literally stir the granules and then pop your hearts into that lovely coffee mixture without burning your hands and it's as simple as that make sure they all get coated with that coffee mixture to stir it all in with a spoon and the longer you leave it in the coffee mixture the darker your hearts will be so if you want them really really dark then you could literally leave them in this coffee mixture overnight just got my baking rack I just got it positioned over the sink I'm just now gonna take out our hearts I think they've been in long enough maybe 10 minutes if that as I say you can leave them in longer if you want and just pop them on to your baking rack so the extra coffee liquid drains away Once we're happy with that we just get a baking tray and we're going to pop them into a warm oven gas mark three something like that you can keep the coffee mixture for a few days if you wanted to do a batch of hearts and there we go they've been in the oven they're nice and dry and that's what they should look like all lovely baked coffee stained hearts just love the effect So on to the last bit now, so all we need to do is obviously take them off the, the rack, nice and dry and crispy, they're like little biscuits, seriously, I love making these. And we're just going to now get them ready to string them all together, so I'm just going to use my craft knife, just be a little bit careful here, I've got my cutting mat, so I can, you know, use my cutting mat if I need to, just watch your fingers, and all you're going to do is pop a little hole on either side of the heart shoulder, just big enough so you can pop your string through and do that for all the hearts and give your cat a stroke if you need to in between and yeah just go through each heart on the shoulder with your craft knife just watch your fingers and then you're going to need to take your string position your swag as you want it to be I'm happy with that and we're going to make some handles it's roughly piece of string about 14 inches long you need two of those fold it in half and just tie a little knot on each end so do that for two of those which will be the handles and then we're just going to cut 
cut some extra pieces for the ties in between, roughly about five, five inches per piece, that's to join the hearts together. So let's just put the handle in first. So working on the outside heart, use a pair of scissors and just poke that twine through the hole that we've created and thread it through and you've formed your handle. And we'll do that on the other heart on the other end of the swag. Make sure it's the outer edge part of the heart that you're doing this on. Then we're going to take our smaller pieces and we're going to thread one from the top of the heart. So we'll go down from the top, poke it through and then up from the back of the heart that it's going to join onto. So up from the back, poke the string through and then tie it into a double knot. And just repeat that all the way along. So down from the top, up through the back on each pair of hearts that you're joining together. Down from the top, up from the back. And just continue that all the way along your swag. off any excess string from each heart if you think they're a little bit too long. But up to you how long you leave them. I like to trim them down just a little bit. And there we have our gorgeous rustic primitive heart swag. So how easy was that? And here's the one we actually dipped in the coffee and made in the step-by-step -step tutorial. And it smells absolutely delicious of coffee and what I was trying to look for in that tutorial was my cinnamon. I couldn't find it anywhere in my herb cupboard. And if you wanted to add a little bit of cinnamon to your coffee mixture, all the better. It just gives you that little bit of a cinnamon smell too. And literally this baked in the oven, 20 minutes on gas mark number three, super simple. I wouldn't recommend you go out and leave it, leave it baking in the oven unattended. I always obviously do it when you're in the house. How easy is that? Now I've gone for a really rustic coffee dip. So the more coffee you put in, the more rustic obviously it's gonna be. So you can see the back there, it's quite dark and it's got some lovely characteristics, the stripes, and that's off my, my baking tray. Now this, I don't bake, so don't worry, I don't bake. This is a baking tray that I've used purely for these heart swags and over the years, cause I used to make a lot of these when I had my gorgeous little shop. So over the years, as I've obviously popped the coffee stained hearts on and baked them in the oven, it's got a little, little bit of a build up of baked on coffee, which I absolutely love. So every time I use it now, it gives you those rustic like stripes, striping marks off the baking rack, which I love. So obviously you don't have to go for the dark coffee stain. You could literally just leave your calico the plain if you wanted to make a pretty heart swag. So you can either go rustic and grungy or you can go really pretty and then just not dip it at all. Just leave your calico, the cream, add your pretty pastel colour fabric scraps and then you've got a different version. And obviously you can do whichever you want. You can mix and match like I have or you could just literally do a string of small hearts. You could do a string of the big hearts. You don't have to have as many on as this. You, you know, it's just your choice and obviously it depends where you're going to hang it. So I've just made this one today and I think this is going to get hung lovely over my fireplace after all the decorations come down. So that's where this one's earmarked for. And it's just super, sim super simple and you only need a little bit of calico and the tiniest of scraps to do the heart fronts and it's just super simple and because it's quite rustic you don't have to overly worry about the stitching is you know perfect because the more the rustic the better and obviously you just threaded it with some jute some jute, jute string and there we go how simple and gorgeous are there so there's that one we did in the tutorial there's one that I had earlier and I'll just show you the difference in the coffee strength so that one's not as strong coffee as opposed to that one which is a little bit darker so you can go you can go a lot darker put a lot more coffee in 
are obviously less. And you can also use tea, but I find coffee gives a better, a better aged vintage look as well. They make absolutely brilliant gifts if people like this type of thing, primitive, rustic, um, things like that make absolutely brilliant gifts and they don't take very long to make either. And I've got the PDF template which you can download. I'll pop the link for that in the box below. Freebie for you to download and you can obviously do both size hearts or help yourself just do one or the other but they'll both be available. And I'd love for you to share. If you make any of these, share them over on Instagram using my hashtag Loopy Mabel because then I can see what you've been up to. So obviously that's a little freebie for you to download so please feel free and share it with others as well. So yeah, so I hope you liked today's quick last minute gift giving idea with using your scraps up. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if you've just found my little channel and you want to follow along with me then please don't forget to hit subscribe. Uh, that's it for me I think now until after Christmas so if I don't see you beforehand for those of you that do celebrate Christmas, have a wonderful, wonderful, safe Christmas and hopefully I shall see you all in the new year with lots more sewing projects and the usual sh shenanigans coming from here at Loopy Mabel headquarters with obviously cats in tow. But until the next time, thanks for joining me so much today and see you very soon.